Hi guys, welcome to the Cast Iron Man Cooking Show, and today, because of my charity, which is just teeming over the top, you're going to get basically three recipes in one, and it's going to be short ribs, beautiful Japanese style short ribs with a beautiful glaze we are going to make out of the drippings from the ribs when they are done cooking, and this is really an ultimate dish to make for people if they're going to come over to your house or whatever, or you're going to just cook for yourself for the whole week. I mean, you know, it's essentially meat and potatoes, but come on. That does that looks better than meat and potatoes, right? I worked for a guy one time, and he comes up to me, and he goes, you know, Mike, you're a real meat and potatoes kind of guy, right? <laughs> sure. I, I love this. I love instead of, like, you know, asking me about what kind of food I like, I just get accused of being a meat and potatoes guy, which is a ba basically like saying, oh, you know, you're a, you're a hick who has no taste. Okay? Well, why don't you look at this? Meat and potatoes my ass, bitch. So we're going to start with three boneless short ribs. And look at those beautiful marbleization in those babies. Salt and pepper up some flour because what we're going to do is we're going to dip these... Uh, pieces of meat in the flour first so that they're totally covered and then sear them in a really hot cast iron pan so they get a beautiful texture on the outside and in the end some of that flour will impart itself to the braising liquid and will help thicken it at the very end when we reduce our sauce so that we don't have to add flour to thicken it and it's going to be absolutely terrific just make sure when you cover them you get every last inch of the meat. Go ahead and put some olive oil in a pan. You could use vegetable oil too if you prefer that. This is Japanese inspired recipe, but I still did use extra virgin olive oil because it is what we always have on hand and I'm not gonna get into, well, I'm a meat and potatoes guy, right? So, <laughs> well, why should I get into a discussion about olive oil? Um, no. That's, uh, okay, I'm getting a little nuts now. Put the olive oil in a pan, bring it over medium high, probably closer to high, I'd say. This is about six or seven on my, uh, on my induction burner. And then just give them a good sear. Make sure they're nice and crusty and brown. Look at that, beautiful. While this is going on, you can start to prep some of the mirepoix for your braising solution. Trust me, and it's a solution, all right? It's a solution to a problem, and your pro the problem is that you're not eating enough short ribs. They're extremely easy to cook, so please make this recipe. Go ahead and move your short ribs to a side plate once they're done searing, and then we're going to retain that oil for sautéing our vegetables before we put our braising liquid in. Kind of meat, kind of meat. Keep doing that in the voiceovers. Kind of meat, like I do some sort of a do 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 uh, shave your carrots. Shave your carrots. Peel your carrots. Shave them to get. Yeah, go get a pet groomer. Get my dog's pet groomer and just take a take a shaver to these babies. And then what I did was, I mean, you could cut them any way you want, but I tried to cut them the same size, obviously based on how the carrot tapers off, so that they all cook nice and evenly. Finally, just a couple stalks of celery to complete the mirepoix. And I'll show you guys in a four cup Pyrex what all that looks like and how much of it I have. And trust me, I have a lot. I filled the pan way too high, so much so that it was actually bubbling past the foil and scorching on the bottom of the heat deflector of the oven and there was smoke in the entire house. So don't do that. Use a bigger pan. You know how I am. Soy sauce, right? We're gonna need to use some soy sauce if we're making a Japanese style short ribs. And red top is full sodium. Green top is typically lower sodium soy sauce. And of course, you're going to want to go full sodium here. Follow that with some mirin, some Japanese cooking wine, and then junmai sake, which is the clear sake, the filtered, the unfiltered, which is one I prefer if I'm going to drink it. It's called nigori. And man, it's really good. This is, I think that you could probably find these ingredients at somewhere like a Wegmans or a Whole Foods. A, a bigger chain might not have, you know, the these type of ingredients. Now that our short ribs are removed from the pan and there's a little bit of residual oil, go ahead and dump the mirepoix in and begin sauteing the vegetables. 
You're obviously not going to get those carrots soft at all during this process. So don't worry about that, but you can start to wilt the celery and the onion a little bit. Once those have sauteed just for a couple minutes, go ahead and put in some tomato paste and introduce this to the vegetables. Do the best you can to get that amount of tomato paste to coat as much of the vegetables as you can and just give it a pretty quick cook. We don't need to go crazy because it's certainly going to dissolve over the course of three hours, three and a half hours when we cook it in the oven. And this really helps us with the depth of the flavor of the short ribs. So now your vegetables have cooked just a slight, slight bit, and we can throw in garlic cloves whole. They certainly do not need to be chopped for this recipe, again, because they're going to have plenty of time to infuse their flavor into the braising liquid. So just give them a quick smash, take off the skin, and then throw them in the pan. Add the braising liquid to the pan, and then some rough chopped pieces of ginger, skin on is fine. Some whole black telesherry peppercorns, <laughs> whole black peppercorns, light brown sugar, and apple juice, organic apple juice. This is way different and much nicer tasting than like a Mott's. Throw in a couple sprigs of thyme and then some bay leaves. Give that a quick stir just so everything is well coated in the liquid and submerged the best it can be submerged. Let all of that come to a light simmer. You can see obviously this is a beautiful color liquid. And then we're going to add our short ribs, which I had to cut in half to fit into the pan in the way I wanted to, but you certainly do not have to cut them. See, they got that nice sear on the outside, and the inside is totally raw, so we really didn't do much cooking at all when we put them in the pan at the very beginning. And here you go, guys. Watch me struggle again to fit this into the vessel. It's a, it's not surprising. I, it's, well, what, what can I do? I'm just a... F an idiot, man. I'm such a fucking idiot. Idiot. I'm so fucking stupid. Uh, just disclaimer for those of you who want to call the dog catcher on me. That's a movie reference, so chill the fuck out. Go ahead and wrap these up. I put a piece of parchment paper on top of the meat first as kind of a moisture-saving failsafe. And then, well, you call it a cartouche if you want. And then I put the foil on top. I pressed it down as tight as I could, and I put it in an oven that was preheated to 325 degrees on convection heat. So if you don't have a convection oven, then don't put it at that temperature. Put your potatoes in a pot, because we need potatoes. Put some potatoes in a pot, and presumably they're yours that you purchased them at the store. That would make them yours. You own them. And I use Yukon Golds, nice and waxy. Uh, we are going to leave the skin on. How do you guys feel about that? You know why? Because I don't want to eat really, really, really mushy, soft. Well, they're going to be mushy, obviously. Really, really just baby food mashed potatoes I see people making sometimes. I don't need that. I want. I will need some texture in there. I love the skin of a potato. You have uh, probably more of the onion from the mirepoix that we didn't use, the other half of that onion. So cut it up into half wheels and submerge it in some buttermilk toss it around and let those soak while you are doing your other preparation because we need to make some fried buttermilk onion straws for topping the short ribs just covered it with plastic wrap and put it in the fridge for these to soak for a couple hours while the short ribs were finishing and the short ribs are in fact finished. It's great. You can go and do whatever you want while this is cooking because it's in the oven and it's taken care of. Well, unless you did what I did, of course, and let it drip onto the heat deflector and cause a smoking nightmare. Look at that. Oh, my goodness gracious. That is going to be something else. And they are just absolutely, you, you can barely pick them up. They're so tender. That's what we want. We want that level of tenderness in short ribs, just cooked to perfection. There's a diff. Some people like will say you can make short ribs, like something like short ribs with uh, the chuck roast that you would make a pot roast with. That is so incredibly false. The taste is, I mean, it's not even close, not even in the same damn ballpark, baby. Probably the biggest difference is the price. 
and cover your ears if you are a snob, because I know you don't want to hear this, but I got these from Costco, and they really do have nice short ribs there. They're like 37 bucks, and you could feed six or seven people with that, which is great. So that's, you know, $8 a person if you add everything else in for an incredible dinner party idea or, you know, a meal to eat throughout the week. We are going to fry up our onion straws. And what I did was I wrapped the short ribs in tin foil and I put them on the side because we're going to reheat them anyway. And then just heat up some vegetable oil and fry these up till they're nice and golden brown. Put them on a paper towel to drain. Not only will this provide obviously more onion flavor, but a dish that is certainly very soft in short ribs, although it is in very enjoyable. I guess it is one note of texture. So these will provide a, a perfect crunch that can be kind of evenly dispersed throughout the dish and breaks up that softness. Because we're not eating baby food. We're not babies. We're Everyone's an adult here, right? <coughs> that is wrong. Everyone is definitely not an adult. Uh, people are extremely immature. Do I, what, what do, I, do I even need to point out to any evidence of that? Please, come on, give me a break. Seriously, no one's mature. No one will ever be mature. You know, we live for 75 to 85 years on this planet. The universe is 13.7 billion years old. Yeah, so why don't you go and divide the mean lifespan of human beings over the age of the universe and tell me if that's mature. Okay, moving on to the gravy. And I am so happy to reveal my fat separator that I got. It was a long time coming for this thing. This helps so much because you can do a technique where you put the uh, braising liquid that has cooked throughout the three hours in the oven. And then uh, what you do is you put it on one side of the heat and you kind of skim the fat off the top. But it's huge. Honestly, look, I don't care. I'm just going to say it. It's a, it's a pain in the ass. It's a huge pain in the ass. And it's it's liable to, like, if you don't have the correct burner, it just creates so much heat in your kitchen. And you're, you're like leaning over the stove and leaning over the flame. This is awesome. You just put all the vegetables at the top with the liquid. You let it drain for a little while. And the layer of fat will be beautifully separated. And you can make the gravy in a much easier fashion. I'm not the kind of person who uh, is, you know, turns my nose up at every single kitchen tool that might only have a couple purposes. Luckily, this one has, I mean, you could just use this as a measuring cup, obviously, with a spout. It's not a single-use kitchen tool, um, but it's it's close. I mean, it's just a cup. It's not like a uh, vajetti, like a vajetti cutter. So add that to the pan, once the fat has separated and you've been able to eliminate it from this. And then we're going to add some honey in, followed by brown sugar. This is all going to help reduce our braising liquid, which has turned gorgeous over the course of a couple hours, into a even more shiny, sheeny glaze. Syrupy would have been good, too, as an S word for this glaze we are in the process of constructing. You're just going to reduce the hell out of this stuff so bring it up to a, a rolling boil and then to bulk up your glaze you're gonna throw in some organic beef stock preferably i don't know if you have your own homemade then add that that'd be great too it'd be great terror probably the short ribs are going to go in the pan once the liquid if you could see the line there how much it actually has reduced so once it's reduced a little bit it's almost like a quarter inch Go ahead and put your short ribs in, which have been sitting in the tin foil and staying warm. Time is just the name of the game with this recipe. So just throw them in and keep reducing, reducing, and imparting all that flavor to the meat. And you'll be left with something really great at the end. Just be patient with the glaze. Because, you know, at this point, you really want to eat them since they look so good. But, you know, time and patience are critical here so it's just such a great meal to make you know it's it's an all-day kind of thing but it's not something you actually have to pay attention to all day look at that nice bubbly like uh, looks like like la brea tar pits of short ribs 
while that is finishing reducing and creating the glaze, we can go ahead and make our mashed potatoes so they're nice and hot and fresh. So once they're fork tender, after they've been boiled, go ahead and put them in a large mixing bowl and smash the hell out of them with a masher. Look at that skin. See, the skin is great. The skin is going to be great on here. You can certainly make these ahead of time and then reheat them and rehydrate them with just a little more milk or heavy cream. So depending on how you want your timing to be or if your preparation for if people are coming over, that's, that's something you could certainly do. So once they're well mashed, go ahead and add some really hot melted butter to your bowl, followed by full strength heavy cream just to bring it all together and make gorgeous creamy mashed potatoes. You'll see it starts off pretty liquidy, but then the potatoes can take on a lot of moisture from both the butter and the cream. And if you've never seen mashed potatoes made in your life, now you know how bad they are for your heart. Now you know. So don't say I didn't warn you. This will take a little while just to break them down, add some salt and pepper, and a little something extra if you want to kick, which is wasabi powder. But we are we're not going to add that because people in our house don't like spice. So there they are. They're done. They're nice and soft. They're nice and hot. Look at that. Very good. On the cutting board, you can you could certainly cut them if you can see the grain at this point or if you recall where the grain is. But I don't even think that that's really necessary. They're just so tender. You you can just I smash them down with the tongs just a little bit so that people can break them apart on their dish and they are ready to be plated for sure. Go ahead and do that just like I did at the beginning of the video or in whatever order you prefer. I topped with some sesame seeds just for a little more color and then I actually did put scallions on it after everything was said and done. Thank you guys for joining me and I'll see you soon. Be well.